Let's get recorded. Hi, this is Bill Hartzer, and this is the Digital Marketing with Bill Hartzer podcast for Thursday, May 19th, 2022. Lots of things going on this week, um, so we'll get, go ahead and get started. We'll take a look at my notes here. Um, so digital marketing news for this week. Apparently, there's the Google search ranking update. Um, on May 16th, which is statically unconfirmed by Google. However, we've actually um, seen a lot of updates. And based on the sites that I work on on a regular basis and the sites that um, I've been following, I'm not seeing any huge ranking changes. However, um, apparently there was a Google search ranking update on the 16th. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned before, um, Google has actually has the, um, so Google Google actually has a lot of updates. They do have, um, like I said, they announced beginning of this year they did five thousand changes last year. So that is um, pretty impressive, and but is unusual. Um, as usual. And so we have to kind of keep that in mind. And that that's what makes this whole industry and SEO interesting is that there are a lot, a lot of updates. So Google actually is <laughs> um, so Google actually is um, testing out using bigger five icons in the mobile search results. And so basically, if you don't know what a five icon is, a five icon specifically is a file. It is an image, a very small image. For example, it is image that is essentially 16 by 16 pixels, 32 by 32 pixels, et cetera, is small. It's a small image and basically it's your, it should be your company logo or if you have a company name like Harcher Consulting, it would be, uh, you know, you could use a capital H. You don't have a lot of, you know, choice between, you know, the colors that are used and the, the fonts and their, you know, and the smoothness and so forth of that image. Um, it's pretty basic, it's very small. And so, it's, however, it's, it's a file that you need to actually add to your website. So it needs to be at, you know, like harcher.com slash fiveicon.ico. And in that case, um, that's where that image file is, it's a .ico file. And, the search engine, I mean, Google actually uses, if you have one, they will show it in most cases and they'll use it. If you don't have one, they'll, they'll have basically, a, if they have a situation where they need to show your fav icon, they will actually show um, just a default one, which is just the world, okay? And it doesn't look good. So anyway, so here's an opportunity so when, and when somebody's, you know, for your website to stand out. Um, so basically when you have a situation where you, in this mobile, mobile search results now, you ask you pe people scroll through the results, they will actually see your larger five icon um, image next to your search result. And since a lot of websites don't use, have a fav icon, it's something that you actually have to add. In that particular case, um, you'll probably stand out. Now, this reminds me of the time when this was first introduced that Google decided, okay, we're gonna show five icons as part of the search results. You choose your five icon, whatever shows up. Now at the time, this was a couple of years ago, at the time they actually, um, you know, where it's, yeah. so anyway, so what I did is I changed my fab icon to say, to be, to show um, the black letters AD, which for ad, that actually looked very similar. 
you couldn't tell the difference between that five icon ad, which was next to my search results. And you couldn't, you couldn't tell the difference between that and actually the Google ads where it said ad and so forth. And so in those cases, when someone did a search, you saw the ads at the top of the search results of Google ads, and then you see my search result in certain, you know, and then you see the ad right next to it with a five icon, and then you see something else. More search results at the bottom, and then probably more ads. Well, I actually, you know, um, just just you know, did that as just for, you know, to, to stir the pot, if you will. Nothing, uh, you know, with Google. Let's see what they would say. See how if they were going to get more clicks on my results, that kind of stuff. More just for, uh, for you know, a reason to blog about it and and so forth and testing. No real intention, uh, but just to stir the pot a little bit. So Google actually found out about it. They were not very. Uh, they were not very, they didn't like it that much. So basically, you need, even Google or some Google representatives was one in particular that actually reached out to me and said, well, you know, you better change it so it doesn't say ad or um, before, you know, someone, um, they make a decision to do something to your search results or, or you know, um, penalize your site or something like that. Anyway, so I went ahead and changed it, so forth. So anyway, at this point, um, Google is showing bigger five icons. If you create a site, have a site, you really do need to, um, whether or not you know you you have a lot of mobile uses or not, it's something that I do recommend that you actually add your five icon. So. Um, kind of related to that, Google Ads has actually been testing this week, testing replacing that word ad. They've been they replacing the word ad on the search results where there's Google Ads, and they've been replacing with the label that says sponsored. Now keep in mind that prior to 2010. The ads actually said sponsored. And here we are 12 years later. And now they're, you know, they in 2010, they changed it, they changed sponsored to ad. And now 22, 12 years later in 2022, they're testing changing it back to saying sponsored again. So I think it has to do kind of with a, you know, uh where you lay the other by speculation. Um, there's maybe two reasons for this, you know, they're testing it and, you know, since it's right now just a test and they haven't actually just gone ahead and changed it. Since they went into the test mode specifically, um, most likely they're testing on whether or not they're going to get more clicks and they're going to make more money on the Google ads if it says sponsored or whether it says, um, or what, you know, whether it says sponsored or whether it says um, ad. Now, they probably are going to run this test for probably two weeks because when they, whenever you do something or change, Google always says basically like, you know, in your Google ads, if you make a change, you know, you need to run those ads for two weeks and make sure, you know, and see if they receive the results. Well, most likely that's probably what they're doing is they're, they're basically testing that to see if specifically there are changes um, in the, and whether or not they make more money or not. Um, the other side of the coin is, is that some, an organization like the FTC may have said to them, well, you know, we really want you to show sponsored because that's what people are used to. And, you know, that seeing that this is a sponsored ad rather than having just this two little characters that say ad, you know, the FTC could have you know, stepped in and said to them, well, you know, it's all it says is ad. It should really say sponsored. We'll see what happens on that. That's just, I'm just throwing that out there because obviously the FTC does have um, some say and they probably have a direct line to Google um, and they've, they've discussed that. 
However, because of the fact that it is, um, it is they're testing it, I suspect that it waited to them testing to see if they're going to make more money rather than an entity like the FTC telling them they need to change. It. So let's talk about the knowledge graph. Um, final subjects for today. So knowledge graph, there's an interesting um, knowledge graph that has shown up. And um, so if you do a search currently, now this is uh, May, time, May 19th, 2022. So this may change at any time. Google may look at it and they may, you know, they may figure out a way to remove it um, because it's essentially spam. Someone is, you know, is spamming the knowledge graph. Now the knowledge graph is something that is a part of the, you know, part of the search engine ecosystem. It's not specific to Google. It's not specific to Microsoft Bing. A knowledge graph is essentially a separate, I would say a separate organization, if you will. Okay. So the knowledge graph specifically, um, you know, Google uses it and Bing uses it and other search engines use the knowledge graph to pull data from the knowledge graph and put it into their search results to populate the search engine results page. Now, just a quick overview of the search engine results page and why this is important is the fact that when you do a search for, let's say, um, Bill Hartzer, okay, um, you will see, um, you know, essentially, right now I'm not bidding on, you know, you may see some ads. I'm not bidding on my name right now. I probably should at some point, but currently I'm not. So anyway, so what you'll see is Google ads and you'll see the organic search results. Now, if we're on desktop or laptop, on the right-hand side, you will actually see the knowledge panel, which is, you know, for my name, okay, which has information about me. It has some links to some social media websites, et cetera. Um, and it has, you know, a category, I believe it's internet marketer or something like that. Then, um, then basically, you know, you have the search results and then you might have some more Google ads. Well, so certain search queries, let's say for a company that is, let's say Walmart or a retail operation that has more, you know, has locations based on the location of the searcher. Um, when they search for the, the name Walmart, okay, um, then basically it will, it will show in the results, <coughs> will show the closest Walmarts, okay. Um, it will also, there may be some Google, there may be some ads, you know, in the Google ads places, the top search results, or data search results, bio search results. There may be, you know, a knowledge panel for that company name. Okay, that knowledge panel will have, you know, have, you know, probably a link to a website, information, maybe a description, um, maybe the company logo, it may have, um, you know, information from essentially the knowledge graph, which is a database of entities, you know, people, places, things, companies, etc. Um, concepts, if you will, nouns, um, and so forth. So, Anyway, when we come back to it, so, so, and another part is the Google business profile. That is, you know, the Google, formerly Google by Google by business, the Google maps. That's different than the knowledge graph. Okay. Knowledge graph data. The knowledge graph um, is, is like I said, it's a database and it has a lot of information in it. And um, so um, there's a lot of websites like, you know, Wikipedia, golden.com, Internet Movie Database. Um, <coughs> could be, you know, other sites, prominent sites in every industry, okay? Could be bbb.org, could be, uh, you know, um, you know, industry site that um, lists companies, maybe in a directory or something, but traditionally really trusted websites. There are thousands of essentially websites that contribute to the knowledge graph. Okay, so basically, when you're listed, you know, in one in this particular case, somewhere there's a website that lists musical artists, and somehow somebody um, was able to um, add a, a musical artist to that 
you know, to that website that then associate, you then added that with a list of their songs um, to the knowledge graph. And that's common, you know, there's a new musical artist, um, you know, uh, you know, a new music group, et cetera, et cetera, then that's, you know, and, and so forth. Um, same thing with the internet, movie, movie database, movies, um, actors, actresses, producers, et cetera. So anyway, so somebody, you know, actually did a, somehow got, um, created a musical artist named SEO Services India, and then they actually added a bunch of songs Okay, um, in you know that were named uh, different, let's say different um, services that they provide, right? Like um, you know, pay per click marketing is a song. Um, SEO um, is a song. You know, so SEO services is a song, etc. So anyway, so what happened is, is they essentially created that entity named SEO Services India. And, you know, and that actually, when you search, you have the go organic, you know, you might have some ads, you have a go organic search results, but on the right hand side, currently you see a knowledge graph entry for that, you know, musical artist named um, SEO Services India. Now, um, what they, you know, normal process is as, as you get, you know, is, is um, obviously music artist, SEO services, you know, it's obviously faked, okay? There's no, you know, unless they've actually, you know, created songs and become a new music artist, but most likely it's just, just spam. So anyway, so what's happened is, you know, so normally the process if you create, so let's say your company, um, you wouldn't really necessarily, you know, create as a musical artist. That's one way, roundabout way to kind of get a knowledge graph entry. However, you know, it's just not necessarily, you know, it's, it's not, uh, you know, necessarily appropriate for a company, uh, perhaps an individual, but regardless, um, anyway, so what should have happened is at the same time, the process is that you create your website and on that website, you use schema markup code to associate the company name if, you know, in case of in this case, music artist name SEO Services India, and you associate that with a what you know on your website, and then you also um, you know have social media profiles that you create, and then as well as entries you know in other sites um, and profiles and listings and so forth um, on the other sites that you know have the same name that are part of the knowledge graph. So then basically the, your website ties in the profiles and says your profiles, your Twitter pro, this Twitter profile, this LinkedIn company page, this Facebook page is all associated with this company name and this website. And then basically what will happen is, is the knowledge graph, when do a search, it might say musical artist name SEO services India, but then they would actually do, the knowledge graph would actually there list the profiles lists the websites, lists the description, et cetera. And that was not done. They basically, basically somebody went in and created this music artist, which then had influence enough to create it in the knowledge graph. So regardless, um, that's kind of an overview of the process that should be taken. Um, when you do a search for SEO Services India, it's interesting because right now, there is a knowledge graph entry, but nowhere, no, you know, if I click on it, there's, you know, there, I could not find the website or a profile or anything associated with that musical artist. Okay. I could find songs and that's all I could find. Right. So whoever did this basically, you know, did it and got it listed in there. However, I don't think they were really smart about it. They don't necessarily, they weren't, you know, they don't completely understand really how, you know, how everything is associated and how to create those associations so that you can actually get your website listed and your, you know, if they were actually doing it, website and profiles, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, you know, and you would actually, they would actually benefit from doing this. 
right? Um, but again, there's actually, you know, more to it just than going to a website, creating, you know, a musical artist name, SEO Services India. Anyway, I don't think this is going to stay there that long. Um, it, it'll be interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and someone has, you know, obviously manipulated this. And so I'm sure Google and people run the knowledge graph will run into the, you know, will we'll basically look at this a little bit better to see how they can stop this from happening again. Again, so regardless, um, we're just about out of, out of time. Um, so this has been the Digital Marketing Podcast with Bill Harser um, for May 19th, 2022. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. Obviously, um, I am live on Facebook ever, at this time, which is 1.30 Mountain Time every Thursday afternoon. Um, and um, I, I will have from time to time a few guests um, on the show this afternoon, uh, on Thursdays at this time. Uh, I do try and cover the uh, digital marketing news for the week and anything that is uh, hot and, and uh, noteworthy and uh, try to convey and give you as much knowledge that I have um, over the years I've been doing this um, since around 1996 to 1998 when I started. Um, that's again for joining me this afternoon. This has been the Digital Marketing with Bill Hartzer podcast for May 19th, 2022. And we will talk to you again next week. Thanks.